Hello and welcome to session two for seniors. We're going to go nice and easy today, very slow. Take your time. It's only going to be about 30, maybe 45 minutes long at the very most. Seniors need a little bit of practice and continue to come to the mat. Seniors. We're going to start out today with all fours. So we'll make sure the hands and the knees are under the hips and hands are nice and square. Widen the fingers and nice finger spread between thumb and pinky, middle fingernail and index finger pointing toward the front of the mat. Be comfortable and natural in your stance. And we'll start our breath work right away, seniors. We're gonna go through cat and cow, but work the breath. Inhale, we're gonna lift that head up, retract the shoulder blades, let the arc come into the spine, tailbone lifts. On the exhale, we're going to shift the hip back, bring up a cat-like body around the shoulders. Forehead comes to the mat. Two more. Inhale, come up. Exhale, shift the hips back toward the heels, drop up from the middle of the belly. Beautiful reach with cat. Protract those shoulders away from the spine. Inhale, come up. Draw it down. Exhale, shift back over the heels and then draw up cat. Pressing back on the knees. Fold if possible. If not, you can certainly get a pillow or a blanket or a bolster or something that you have at home and you can sit up on that pillow if you wish. Even the blocks work as well. Here we're just going to work a little bit through the spine. So on the move for the seniors, they need the strength, they need the balance, the power, muscle tone, circulation of the blood. Let's take the arms all the way up. Exhale, hands to your heart. Inhale up. Prepare your breath with the movement. Exhale, hands to the heart. Last one, inhale, come up. Exhale, hands to the heart. Coming forward, back to the all fours. My friends, we're gonna work on a really nice lunge today. It's going to be a modified lunge. Please have your blocks in line with your feet. So block, foot, space, block. Maybe you have your hands uh, at the height of this block. You could also turn them higher, open up that uh, thoracic a little bit, or you certainly could have them low, nice and wide, but again, baby finger, thumb, three of the first digits, so that you can pick up the block, turn it any way you wish. Find what works comfortable for you. Try all the different sizes. So for here, for our first kneeling lunge, what I'd like you to do is we are going to open up and just kind of kneel forward a little bit. Tiny bit of offline of the knee. And then we're going to press back as far as basically these hamstrings allow you to reach back. Notice the spine is staying nice and straight, as straight as possible and back again. Put something underneath that right knee if you need it. And one more time. Inhaling forward. Exhale, come back. We're not moving the blocks today. We're just going to keep the blocks right where they are. And back again. So stretch and strengthen one. Let's switch sides. Here we go. 
Make sure the foot is secure, lined up. Readjust anything you need to. Inhale as you're coming forward, just slightly offline for a moment. Exhale, reach back. Feel the strength in the left side of the leg while you're having nice flexibility in the right side. Exhale, come back. Inhale, forward. Exhale, come back. Come to the neutral. This time we're going to come up just a little bit. Rotate the spine toward the right and drop the left arm outside that right thigh. And just a gentle twist out from the long line of the mat. This right arm can come up to the sky if that's available to you, can come straight out the back. That will create a little bit more rotation in your spine. If not, straight down, resting, lots of options for the hand and the arm. Inhale, exhale, rotate back to center. Come on down to the blocks. Switch those legs. So nice modified lunge, basically a nice kneeling lunge. Taking the right hand, dropping it down off that left thigh. Using the power of the back of the hand and that side of that thigh to press into each other while you maintain a twist. Again, three to five breaths. Option to take the arm up, take the arm out, and notice that I'm avoiding this arc here. So straight up from the shoulder head, straight back from the shoulder head, or just letting it fall nicely at the side. Big inhale, exhale. Re-rotate the spine to neutral. Come forward onto the blocks or the mat. If you have your hands on the mat, that's fine. These blocks are just an option. Resting back into child's pose for just a moment. Taking the arms behind you to relax the shoulders or certainly taking them extending to the top of the mat. On your next inhale, we'll take the hands to either side of the knee. Remember, extending the arms, presses up the spine. Enjoy, enjoy a nice lengthy spine here. Now we will take that kneeling lunge to the next level with a very gentle twist. So hands will come forward. Left foot comes by the blocks. Inhale as you come up to Elevated posture here. Prayer hands. Big inhale, prepare. Exhale as you rotate out. Inhale as we lean forward. And I'm going to go ahead and rest that elbow, or actually the upper arm, not quite the joint, but more here, resting on the outside of that. Couple more breaths. Inhale to come up. Exhale, re rotate back to center. Inhale, prepare. Exhale as you lower down to the blocks and switch sides. Inhale, come back up to prayer. Exhale, rotate. Inhale, prepare. Exhale, lower down. Want to 
to show you a little bit of a trick if you need it is instead of the block being here and you wanted to put the block right on the thigh stay away from the knee joint but put it right on the long bone of the thigh you can certainly rest here or even here if that works for you another option with these blocks to play as i press my hands together i'm pressing down on that left arm into the right thigh bone and just getting a little bit more height of my heart and my ribs. Inhale, come off that thigh. Let the block drop. Exhale, come through center. Inhale, prepare. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, come forward off that back. Knee just a little bit so I can get some energy to bring the right foot back. Exhale, come to child's pose. Either arms extended in the front or move the blocks from behind you. Fingertips toward the ceiling or maybe you're just enjoying hands any way you wish. Come right at the height of the knee. Press up. Extend the arms. On the next inhale, pressing off and sitting back. Very nice. Now we were working in the first two foot plane in space here. We're going to come up a little bit and come to a warrior one and we'll practice a little bit more in the two to four foot space, but still the same theme of a slight lunge. So there went that left foot up between the blocks. I'm going to lean, free that back knee like we've done in the past, curl the toe, come up here, and we'll have just this nice mid-plane, little baby pyramid, not quite, Breathe three to five breaths, your breath. Be natural. Now we're gonna lean a little bit forward. Scoot that back leg underneath you just a few inches. Hands on hips. Inhale, come up, and we are at a warrior one. This is not a 45 degree in the back foot. It is in line, warrior one, like I am on those iron railroad tracks. And we're gonna work our arms a little bit. We're gonna take cactus arms first. Inhale, as we lean back just a little, actually more lift up. Exhale, round through, a little cat-like. Inhale, come up. Exhale, lower in a little bit of the cat, but I also have my cactus arms facing down. Inhale, come up. Exhale, low. Inhale, come up. And this time we'll take our arms in front of us. Now if it's too much to get the elbows together, that's fine. You can have them parallel or together. Inhale, up. A little bit more extension here. Exhale, cat. So the balance and the strength for you seniors, this is a great move. The balancing is coming because you are constantly moving. You're not just holding. There's the balance uh, test. And then also the strength in the legs 
so that the upper body can be more mobile. One more time. Exhale, lower. Inhale, prepare. Exhale, all the way back down to the blocks. And notice that that action is not just coming from my spine to come down, but my back leg is kicking back toward that uh, curtain back there. So the leg lifts up and back, and then I have this nice neutral area for the spine either coming to the floor, coming to blocks, having the knee bent, having a micro bend, but try not to sink it all the way down and then lean into the hamstring stretch here. Keep a nice strong leg. Holding a couple breaths. Still active in the feet. A big inhale, I'm gonna go ahead and bend both knees. Free that left foot, let it join the right. Exhale, lower the knees down. Inhale as we sit back into the hero's pose again, or Vajrasana, that's up to you. Maybe you're just coming back to the kneeling. And please have something under your knees, a towel, anything that you need to protect your knees. And the other side. Inhale as we come forward. There goes the right foot to the block. I'm going to lean off that back leg, curl my toes, come more into a pyramid. I may have a back bent knee. See, my heel is off the floor. Or I may decide to go ahead and just bring that whole uh, pad of the foot down to the mat. Nevertheless, keeping micro bend, it's hard to see in these pants, but the micro bend of the knee, rather than straightening it out, a slight bend. Even the back leg, it has a slight bend. Nice long spine lifting away from the blocks or the mat if you're all the way to the mat. It doesn't matter where you need to be. A couple more breaths. I'm going to inhale just to come off that back foot a little bit, bend both knees, just do a tiny pickup of the foot, maybe just a couple of inches until you feel comfortable with your foot seal here into the mat, and the arms come as high as the hip, and you can press up. Get that nice established stance of the foot first before you extend that back leg and rise. And of course that front leg is, energy is pressing down into the mat. Cactus arms, it's just the other side. Closed fingers or open fingers, whichever suits you. On your next inhale, let's take it back, extending the spine just a little bit. Exhale, coming to cat. Inhale, coming up. I'm not doing a lot of change in the hip, or the legs or the feet. I'm just working through the cervical spine, thoracic spine, and of course the arms. Exhale. Inhale, come up. This time bringing the elbows either parallel or together. Get that nice stretch across, across the upper lats here little bit of the trap, relax the neck, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, Exhale. Inhale. Neutral. 
shoulders relax. Exhale, lower all the way down. Hold for a few breaths. Keeping micro bend again in the knee. Couple more breaths. Let that inhale embrace the exhale. They need each other, right? Inhale as I lean forward just a little bit. Step back. My right foot wants to meet the left. Exhale as I use the control of the feet. My feet changed my hip tilting. So as the feet came up, the hip was able to tuck in a little bit, bend those knees, and control the knees coming down to the mat. Inhale to come back to Vajrasana, the hero's pose. And again, sitting uh, down if you wish. Move the blocks out of the way. We're probably just staying in the first and first foot, second foot plane, third foot, fourth foot plane today. So we're really only doing about three quarters of the action here in space. The next one would be the fifth foot and the sixth foot, right? High as a average a human being. So we work, the whole body actually works through all three planes. But often, maybe we stay low. Maybe we're staying in the middle. Maybe we've decided to do a practice that's completely standing. And we're not going to the mat, standing up and going to the mat. It's always standing high. So a good practice is to venture through all three planes. But uh, it depends on how you're feeling and what you're taking care of that day. How do you want to have your practice? But know that those options are there. We will go ahead today and work a little bit of the hamstring stretch. We'll do a, a double leg. Again, you can certainly have a holster and my hip tilted anteriorly. See when I came forward like that, the spine lifted up. So this is certainly an option to have a nice seat we're going to bring the arms out to the side because right away we think we're going to reach, right? And my rounded shoulders will draw my skull forward. And then I'll have this reach and bend. I'll have a flexion in the upper neck and we already have enough of the rounded shoulder. So we want to stay back. Keeping the arms with the rib cage or near the rib cage. As you come a little bit lower, and you're still working this nice stretch in the muscles of the back of the leg, right? They're contracting on the top, and they're elongating in the back, so they're lengthening in the back, especially with the flexed toes. Couple more breaths. Bringing the hands close to the chest, either prayer or folded. Inhale, squeeze the legs, press down with the legs as the spine comes up. Very nice. So we went right to the double leg. This is Janu Shirshasana. Janu is a knee. Shirsha is your head. So we have this head to knee concept. But I prefer to think that the work is done right here in the upper thigh. Of course, uh, the gluteal and a little bit of the QLs here as they're leaning forward, drawing in the core a little bit, right? So if you feel it in the legs, it does become a bit of a leg stretch, but most of the energy is right here in the fulcrum of the hip. Very nice. Now today, before we go into Shavasana, because again, these are short sessions for seniors, these are 50 and up, we're gonna work on our 
cobra posture today. And I want you to get some kind of a towel. You can uh, Tootsie Roll up a towel. You can have a couple of lineups of pillows. This works really well because it's firm, but maybe you want a little bit more give. So we're gonna demonstrate today with this cushion here so that from the child's pose, and you know how we're coming forward into, let's just call it full cobra. Baby cobra is a little lower to the ground, full cobra, which turns very quickly into up dog if you lift the knees and go into down dog. But we'll just do our little full cobra. We might have to play with this a little bit and find out where this needs to be. But I want to lay this down just in front of my hip bones. So we're going to inhale, come up, exhale, lower in. So that's right where the top of the pubic bone meets. Exhale, I'm going to fold those elbows to the back and lower onto this bolster. Now this is one way to do your cobra. Now here would be baby cobra. Here would be full cobra. This is up dog with my knees extended, but we're just going to keep our legs on the ground and keep the tops of the feet on the ground. Inhale to come over, get that spine through neutral. Readjust the spine before you exhale back to the child's pose. Two more times. Inhale, come up. Exhale, cat like just a little bit of the pelvic girdle. Draw the core in. Leaning onto the edge of that bolster, fold the elbows. That's what brings down my torso. Prepare, inhale. Exhale, press. Inhale, shift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, come up. Exhale, draw the pubic bone toward the seam of the end of that pillow or bolster. Fold the elbows. Inhale, prepare. Exhale, press the glutes, squeeze the legs. Inhale, shift. Exhale, child's pose. couple of breaths here. Inhale, come to all fours. Exhale, walk the hands back to the knees. You can certainly remove the bolster. Inhale all the way to seated posture in the heelless pose, and then we will shift our hips back onto the floor. Today's bound angle. Konasana, remember Bada, bind, Kona, angle, asana, posture. So it's binding and angle in the posture, correct? So what we do is we bring the ball of the foot and the heel of the foot together and you flare the toes out. Now this is one way, but notice how low my ankles are from the pubic bone. If I took a line straight out from the pubic bone, my ankles would be a good three, four, maybe even five inches below the pubic bone. So I'm going to create a natural arc in my low back. So what we're going to do with the blocks today is that we're going to create, let's see, let's try this. It's like building blocks again. This might work if you can get both feet on the bolster, both sides of the feet or I'm just kind of creating a piece here. Again, two books, pillows. 
the richest practice in the world can be very inexpensive. There go the feet, the ball, the heel. I'm going to flare my toes out to the side. That bind creates stability in the hip. And now my ankles are just about the height of the pubic bone, and that allows my low back to sink in. Two choices, actually three choices, with bound angle. We can be out here, arms T-shape, height of shoulder, palms are down, because you want to retract the shoulder blades a little bit, let them kiss together in the back a little bit. This is one. Another option is arms over the head. Now that draws that spine a little bit longer and might create a little bit more of an arch. But what a great opening for the rib cage. Okay, so this feels really good to get the ribs open. Not, remember, not flary open. We're still dropping the rib cages in because we want to keep this nice stability here in the muscles of the ribs. That's what keeps the spine flat. So if you can keep stable ribs and bring your arms up over your head, great. That's choice two. Choice three is a wonderful lymphatic flush where the hands just come behind the skull and you support the skull. And you have all this pit open, pit open. You can even take your hand and massage into those glands a little bit. Very large uh, lymph glands all in the pit and they go all the way to the back. Okay, so if you want to keep that open, let some blood flow get there because we're often just here squeezing down on the gland. Maybe you want to bear that pit up. Doesn't matter what it looks like, just bear the pit. Hairy, sweaty, who cares? Bear your pits to the world. Open up the lymph gland. So this is another choice here with uh, a lymphatic flush. Your lymph glands are here on either side of the legs actually in this triangle here. They, you, they are also behind the sinuses and they're in the pits. So, in the pit. So here is lymphatic flush. Nice supported upper shoulder girdle and retracted scaps in the back. Or of course, all the way up and trying to not allow that lift to happen in the lungs. Meanwhile, you need some of the shape of the arms, and you're exploring some different uh, shapes and options to put your body in, and you add more tools to your toolbox, look what's been happening the whole time. This wonderful bound angle of the legs, terrific extension of the adductor muscles here, some of the finer muscles of the inner groins. Bound angle. Keeping the ankle and the heel lifted. This can be held from 30 seconds to 5 minutes, depending, as long as things are supported and you have lots of props. Now take the hands to the outsides of the thighs and press your legs together with your hands. Obviously, bringing the uh, knees toward the heart and feeling a really nice tuck posture here, here, just kind of rolling around a little bit, giving a nice massage. And then taking the feet for the blocks and the pillows and just kind of moving them out of the way. If you do need to adjust yourself on the mat, I always recommend the heel bone, the shoulder blades, the back of the skull, and the elbows, so that if I want to inch to the short line of the mat this way, 
There goes the hip and heel, shoulder blade, elbow, skull. If I want to go the other way, I'm going to use the skull, elbow, shoulder blades, hip and heel. So you can walk back and forth on this mat, flat on your back, using the major bones of the back body. All of these, hip and heel and so on. Okay, walking back just a little bit. So that you're safe as you're moving around on the mat. We will prepare for a very gentle Shavasana. Again, Shavasana can be from a minute to 10 minutes to meditation for any length of time that you choose. Smooth the wrinkles out of the eyelids. Rest your eyebrows. Create space between the eyebrows. And let your eyes fall into their socket. Relax your cheeks. Unhinge your jaw. Relax your teeth and your gums and your tongue. And the neck is soft and open. Shoulders are relaxed. Feel that wave of energy relaxation cascade down your body, all the way to your feet. Connect your breathing. Feel your belly rise and lower. Breathe into the back of the lungs. Bring your 